The winter holiday season continues rolling on in with this year's winter Christmas banner. From Engage, we got fan favorite Yunaka enrolling at the Officers Academy for some holiday lessons from our professor duo. Edelgard and Dimitri have swapped weapons, but Claw is usual doing his own thing as this year's Tempest unit. For this year's winter break homework, we have to read and understand a whole mess of pirate recruitment skills, talk about some stats and build ideas as well. If it wasn't totally obvious, Intendant Systems wants your wallet and maybe your neighbor's wallet as well. No 4 star focus unit this year, but there are 4 spark opportunities. I'm pretty sure you do not need the fate pass for these seasonal sparks, but double check in game before you summon. Usually you do need the pass for limited time banner sparks. Now up first is Fae newcomer, Yunaka. She's a very popular character from Engage, so we'll see if this ult is enough to drop her CY8 chances. To me, Yunaka 100% is going to get the Dorothea treatment in Fae. Basically, they're going to give her a ton of seasonal ults, but hold on to that regular version, and guess who got a winter ult last year as well. Maybe Dorothea can pass on the mantle, and boy they did not hold back for Yunaka. She's a colorless dagger cavalier, with 39 HP, 43 attack, 47 speed, 21 defense, and 30 res. Speed super boon is excellent, and attack is great as well. Defense is a bit low, but Yunaka brings a lot of damage reduction to shrug off a hit. For old scales, Yunaka has Flared Sparrow to combo with the new physical tier for Poison Strike, and she has Fatal Smoke 4 to make that extra damage count. Also, no hiding behind miracle effects. Silent Yule Knife is a wild weapon, and this is only our first banner unit. Yunaka gets Kanto Distance with a max of 3 spaces and accelerated specials. When above 25% HP, she gets plus 5 stats and up to a bonus plus 9 attack and speed, the last allies are adjacent when fighting. She then gets Offense and a follow-up to double and no guard to charge up that special. If she initiates, she gets damage reduction piercing for non-special skills equal to X times 30%. She also has her own damage reduction against first attacks, with an S, for the same X times 30%. This mysterious X value is equal to the number of spaces moved by whoever initiates combat, up to a max of 3 spaces. Additionally, new mechanic, if any space within 2 spaces of Yunaka has a Divine Vein effect, or it is difficult to rain, then X automatically equals 3. This weapon is a doozy. If Yunaka initiates when moving 3 spaces, she gets 90% DR piercing and 90% DR for herself, plus it works on brave hits too. She also gets these if Divine Vein or Difficult to Rain is nearby. On top of that, you got plus 14 attack and speed of solo, sling, offense in a follow-up, and no guard. As per most things these days, if you don't have access to DR piercing, Yunaka probably isn't dying it to one hit. The good news is that she can't just chuck lethality instantly, so if you don't solely rely on percent DR, then she can be tanked at least for a hit. The bad part is that if Yunaka doesn't die, she is contouring potentially 3 spaces from whence she came. You can modify her build for some annoying hit and run tactics. To complement Govig's Occultist Strike, Yunaka brings Assassin's Strike. This tier 4 Poison Strike upgrade is inheritable by all physical damage dealers. It's the same as its magic damage counterpart, just for physical damage. If Yun initiates combat, deal 7 damage as combat begins, inflict minus 4 speed and defense on the foe during combat, and deal true damage on hit equal to 20% of the foe's defense stat. Building from Poison Strike 3 makes this an easy upgrade, and with Flared Sparrow, you can inflict an instant 14 damage, which is a more accurate true damage mechanic since it can't be reduced. While everyone can run this skill, it's a more interesting new option for ranged cabs and flyers who don't have as many must-use B skills. They also can run it with flared A skills. Winter Yunaka is quite scary, long range attacker with up to 90% DR piercing and 90% DR for herself. If she survives, she has Kanto distance to reposition far away. The main thing to keep track of is whether you're initiating from 3 spaces, or when near divine veins or difficult terrains such as trenches. Yunaka can get 30 or 60% DR effects, but we want that stupid 90%. Due to the divine vein condition, she is incentivized to stack up with other flared scale users, or units like Rada Tosker who can paint the whole map. With flame tiles though, that will stack with flared sparrow plus assassin strike for 21 free damage. Without fire, it's still 14 free damage, and Yunaka can double plus consistently charge her special. Luna can proc on their second attack if she takes a counter. With the true damage from Assassin's Strike, it's almost equal to lethality and damage. Now to top it off, Fatal Smoke 4 ensures healing is out of play, and Miracle Effects are disabled. The Miracle Special will still work. Honestly, you're going to need that to survive most of this banner. An interesting aspect of Silent Yo Knife is that it does punish units like Rattle Tosker or Brave Corn, who set up Divine Veins around their team. Yunaka won't need to move 3 spaces. Do keep in mind though that this entire kit is basically player phase only, I don't really see a reason not to use Flared Sparrow, if anything catch for mixed phase stats or maybe something like push or fury for self recoil purposes. 
If you want to be annoying, you can sacrifice Assassin Strike for Wind or Water Sweep. You're not going to lose us some damage, but gain Sweep safety. She can deploy the Flame Tiles, then Kanto far away. Desperation Form could be a fun for immediate follow-ups, plus Heavy Blade would be enough to proc Luna in two hits. Fatal Smoke is great, but you can also stack on Savage Blow type skills. Poison Strike as a seal works as well. Speed Smoke 4 for some kind of enemy phase protection or the new Insight Sea skills for easy self boss. For other Sacred Seals, Guard is nice to not get hit by a special counterattack. Although, spoiler, that's not going to save you from the rest of this banner's units. For specials, you could do Ruptured Sky or Moonbow for two taps. You could run Lethality, but we already have large amounts of TR piercing and it doesn't require extra cooldown. Overall, Winter Yunaka can be quite annoying. She may not immediately one-tap you, but you might not one-shot her back either. She can certainly assassinate units who fully rely on DR though, and she can make a clean escape. I'm sure we'll see many more Yunaka ults in years to come. Our next unit is Winter Dimitri. He's an Axe Cavalier again this time with 41 HP, 47 attack, 46 speed, 32 defense, and 19 res. Attack Super Boon is great because Dimitri can hit incredibly hard. Like his many alts, a strong magic damage hit will send him home quickly though. For old skills, Dimitri has Attack and Speed Prime 4 for fun distant counter setups. You can try to activate it with Panic Smoke 4 for debuffs, Foe Bounty Doubler, and Panic itself. Dimitri's very green blue Yule Axe has 16 might, Kanto 2, and Excited Specials. If he starts to turn above 25% HP, he gains plus 6 attack and speed field buffs and the you no know, follow up status. If he starts combat healthy, Dimitri gets bonus stats equal to 5 plus 15% of his speed at start of combat. He gains special quit on minus Y before his first attack, with Y equaling the distance moved of the initiator. Max of 3 cooldown for 3 spaces. If Dimitri has 4 positive stance effects active, he will automatically gain minus 3 cooldown as well. Last up, Dimitri heals 7 HP after combat. Wind Tribe Claude has shared his secrets with his fellow house leaders. If Dimitri or the foe move 2 spaces to attack, he will proc his new special on that first hit. It's only a 2 cooldown special with slang, so Dimitri can actually counter 1 layer of scowl since he can get minus 3 cooldown total. He will get said minus 3 cooldown if Prime Force distant counter conditions are met, and yes, Dimitri can meet those with his kit. Most of this is going to come from his new B skill, Barbarity, which you can also just call Atrocity 3 because that's what it is. If the foe is higher than 25% HP, Dimitri inflicts minus 4 attack, speed, and defense debuffs, gains true damage equal to 25% of his attack stat, and reduces damage from the foe's first attacks with an S by 40% during combat. With an easier HP check and DR versus brave attacks, this is straight better than the remixed Atrocity 2 we just got. After combat, Dimitri still inflicts minus 6 debuffs to all foes within 3 spaces, but instead of a pulse smoke type effect, he now will gain a vantage and dodge status. This is permanent advantage and more percent DR. From his weapon, you got the no follow up status, and when Barbarity activates, Panic Smoke 4 also procs. That grants foe penalty doubler as a status, so Dimitri now has 4 status effects to activate Distant Counter from Prime 4. Just like when Tribe Clawed, Dimitri will be very annoying to deal with if he attacks first. If the massive amount of true damage wasn't enough, Dimitri has more firepower. Since he likes committing atrocities, Dimitri will show no quarter. He's a nice guy though, so he'll let others partake in the killing. No quarter is a new inheritable 3 quid on special. It can be used on sword, lance, and axe, infantry, cavaliers, and flyers. Sorry army units, you got your own specials. Damage wise, no quarter is nothing special. It quite literally is just draconic aura. 30% attack as boosted damage. However, if you face an armored foe, this goes up to 40% attack. The big reason everyone is going to be using No Quarter is that it's a damage reduction piercing special. That is basically all the reason most units need to run this thing, especially Cavs and Flyers since they don't have Special Sparrow 4 or Temple or No Fall Up 4. Unfortunately, the lower cooldown may not work with Gambit builds, so be wary if you got excited specials. Otherwise, if you do not like percent DR, No Quarter is kind of just the new default option. Draconic Aura is not the best damage special usually due to scaling, but ignoring DR is too powerful. For the new Arcane Threema fans, if you haven't inherited yet, you can give it to Lucina. Slang plus tempo is pretty good for 3 cooldown. For me, I really want to slap this thing on my brave Erica. Now let's go over Winter Dimitri's game plan. Unlike his Summer Alt's Brave Attacks, Dimitri brings instantly charged specials with no quarter being a DR piercing Draconic Aura. You still have Atrocity's large true damage hits, and the only thing you need to do is initiate from 2 or 3 spaces away. If you initiate from 3 spaces out, this lets Dimitri counter 1 layer of scout. 
double or triple scowl, not looking like such a bad idea. Now, assuming Dimitri kills every last one of them, his enemy phase is disgusting. After combat, he gains Vantage and Dodge plus full penalty doubler, which affects the minus 6 debuffs. With Blue Yo Axe's now full up status, this procs Prime 4's distant counter. Now you have a unit with DC plus Vantage plus a Deer Piercing Special that is going to proc on the Vantage hit. Many are saying this is probably a nod to the Battalion Wrath plus Vantage combo. For the most part, no reason to really swap anything out here. I think the main change some may want is Incite Attack and Speed over Panic Smoke 4 for the upfront stats. It gives a status effect for Prime 4 as well. Another front loaded option is Menace if you can get a fort status from your team. If you want to cheese the enemy's cheese, then Fatal Smoke 4 can be used to counter miracle effects. For A skills, Clash 4 is better to neutralize debuffs, but Prime Force Distant Counter gives Dimitri a shot at fighting ranged units. Flared Sparrow can be used as well if you're going full player phase or you don't want to vanish cheese ranged foes. Now for specials, No Quarter is kind of a must to handle DR. If you're going to pair up with Legendary Alir, I would swap to Luna and Dimitri can charge Dragon Fang as well. For seals, attack and speed catch is great or use the squad HBS for HP as well. For initiating, if Dimitri doesn't one shot or gets scout out, then guard can help him get to that follow up attack. Additionally, if scout starts to become incredibly common, heavy blade to try and charge no quarter for his second attack. Overall, winner Dimitri has some nasty cheese. Any unit too reliant on percent DR is just gonna instantly die. Just watch out for a hardy bearing on the enemy phase though. Edelgard's been on the down low for a little bit, but she's back just in time to cement her spot in the next A Hero Rises. Winter Edelgard is a Lance Army unit and will complete the full color spectrum. For stats, no surprises, 46 HP, 47 attack, 17 SP, 47 defense, and 44 res. Min-max, super tanky, and will bring the pain as per usual. Edelgard has attack and res super boons. You may actually want that extra res, since for old skills, it's just Divots and Res Ploy 3. A solid skill, but on an armor unit? Now, I do appreciate Edelgard once again, isn't immediately going for a savior route. The not black, black yo lance is quite strong. 16 might start specials. If Edelgard initiates with more than 25% HP, she applies Divine Vein Flame tiles after combat, similar to Flared A skills. However, like her Black Eagle Battalion Gambit, Raging Flames, Edelgard deploys two rows of fire. Maybe keep her away from the Christmas tree. Now, for the combat part of this weapon, when above 25% health, Edelgard inflicts attack and demons debuffs equal to 15 minus the number of adjacent allies times 2, minimum of minus 6. She then gets special cooldown minus Y before her first attack, with Y equal to distance moved of whoever initiated. Max of 3 cooldown, and if the foe is standing on an allied flame tile, then Y automatically equals 3. Next, if Edelgard is solo, she straight up gets 100% DR Pierce on all hits. This has lowered the more allies are adjacent to Edelgard. Last, if Edelgard has Weapon Triangle Advantage or the foe is on an allied flame tile, then she also neutralizes any non-special miracle effects. Kinda like Harmonic Edelgard, there are conditions to meet here, but they're so easy it's really stupid. Edelgard wants to be alone, and she just gets minus 15 attack and defense debuffs, 100% DR peers, and if she moves, she can get up to minus 3 cooldown immediately. Edelgard is also rewarded for fighting foes on flame tiles, which she deploys after combat. Doing so gets her the max minus 3 cooldown and negates any miracle effects. After Edelgard lights the field on fire, she can attack again thanks to Raging Tempest. New to the skill, at start of turn, if Edelgard is full HP or any foes within 3 columns or 3 rows centered on Edelgard, then she gets plus 1 movement and charge for 1 turn. If she is next to 1 or fewer allies when fighting, then inflict minus 5 attack and defense on the foe, deal true damage per hit equal to 15% attack, and if initiating, unit gets to move again once per turn. Raging Storm 3 is now easier to use. Edelgard no longer needs to be fully alone. She can actually be next to one ally, which means things like warp skills could work for her, and it just improves general usability. The reason this Edelgard doesn't have Assault Troop is that it's built into this skill, except she also gets plus one movement. Same three movement as Harmonic, now with two movement for more attack options. So, we know Edelgard can get up to minus three cooldown before her first attack. This will be to instantly proc Armored Blaze. This is basically the same as Armored Beacon, but the 40% DR only works versus melee foes rather than ranged. It's a weaker bonfire special on 3 cooldown, but 40% defense is still respectable. The 40% DR will trigger mostly when the foe activates their special, but since Edelgard is going to lead with Armored Blaze, it will reduce the next attack, whatever that may be. 
This special is inheritable by all armors minus healers, but obviously you probably want it on your near saviors since the Tempt Reduction only works in melee matchups. Edelgard will continue to share the power creep with Attack and Defense Prime 4, basically same as the Attack and Speed version. If bonus is active on unit, gain Attack and Defense equal to the number of positive stats effects active times 2, plus 3, max of plus 9 Attack and Defense. This is reached with 3 active statuses. If you can get that 4th status, the user gets Distant or Close Counter. Prime is inheritable by all physical damage units, and it does not count field buffs at all. Edelgard has two statuses of her own, which is charge and plus one movement. However, she's not really a distant counter unit. This is pretty much a pure luxury skill for her. If you want distant counter, you're going to need outside status support. Otherwise, Edelgard is going to be player phasing it up with Raging Storm. Winter Edelgard brings some new flavor to her unique armored playstyle. Like Brave 80, she now has two movement, and instead of warping, she has built-in charge, similar to Assault Troop. Without a flared A skill, Edelgard can deploy Divine Bane Flame Tiles, and she lays down a second row as well. If she moves two or three spaces, she instantly readies Armored Blaze, and not tied to her special is the potential for 100% DR piercing. Against green foes or foes on flame tiles, she also disables miracle effects. Now Edelgard can get up to minus 20 attack in Demon's Devils, true damage based on 50% attack, and Raging Storm's extra action now works when next to one ally. Something to keep in mind is that this Edelgard completely forgoes any kind of follow-up effects and doesn't have brave hits nor quit on reduction. Guild Force can allow for 3 actions, and I think it does get reduced by Black Yield Lance. You could also just run Bolt Fighter, not really a huge issue there. Now, she won't have any percent DR if you're going to run Gale Force though. If you always move through spaces, Edelgard can upgrade to using Ignis. Like Dimitri though, using Armored Blaze on the lower cooldown leaves room to counter one layer of Scow. As for Savior, Winter Edelgard could run it, but this ult is really incentivized to be a player phase unit. The more allies she's nearby, the lower her DR piercing and attacking Demon's debuffs. Two adjacent allies will drop 100% pierce to 40%. If you still want to try it though, you could try Hardy Fighter or the new Weaving Fighter. Having a C slot not needed for Assault Troop or Savior is quite interesting. The tier 4 ploy can add a lot of damage, plus you help the whole team out. As usual, you do technically want more flat res. As mentioned, Prime 4 is kind of more of a luxury skill here, so if you aren't planning to add 2 more statuses, Edelgard could go for something like Forge's Defense and Res 3. Still Water can work, but dropping defense will hurt Armored Blaze. If you want a consistent distant counter though, you could use distant defense from a solo or wait for an attack in defense variant. For other C skills, smoke fours can be great with Edelgard's extra action. I would only swap off though if you really care about Prime 4 or you really already have a defense from ploy unit on the team. For the most part, this Edelgard is going to fly in, nuke someone, torch the place, and then probably you're going to want to retreat. You can use Gale Force, but this Edelgard isn't the most protected. Open to getting doubled and her only DR comes from Armored Blaze if you're using it. Unlike Dimitri, there is no easy or intended way to proc Prime 4 for just encounter. Armored Blaze's DR is melee only, so again, Prime is more of a luxury here than in intended to be part of the playstyle. Still, if you can Prime just encounter and she survives a hit, Edelgard is going to fire back with a special with tons of DR piercing. Just don't hang out with too many allies. Edie still does want to be mostly solo and on the move. Our last unit for this very scary banner is Dual Winter Byleth and Byleth. The Professors are a Sword Army unit this time, with 47 HP, 46 attack, 18 speed, 45 defense, and 46 res. Attack Super Boon is great, but 46 base res is highest among all Sword units by a decent bit. Another min-maxed army unit, the Violets are going in a different direction from Edelgard. For old skills, they are the third unit with Fire Flood Boost 3. They don't need HP, but it's kind of great with percent DR, and if you're in a healthy team, then it has Guard on either phase, kind of just like a better tier 3 dual stance. They will also have attack and res far save. We haven't hit tier 4 saver skills yet. Now, the Bionet's Holy Yule Blade has some interesting effects. It has accelerated specials and distant counter. If above 25% HP, Bionet gets plus 5 attack, defense, and res, and bonus to those stats equal to 20% of their res stat at start of combat. Bionet then gets no guard, and they have a scowl effect. If the foe uses an offensive special, and Bot has 3 or more res, then inflict special quit on plus X on the foe before their first attack. X is equal to distance moved of whoever initiated with a max of plus 3 cooldown. If Bot triggers Savior, it automatically is plus 3 cooldown. Finally, if the foe is ranged, Bot has Nelsie Disrupt, meaning they ignore enemy effects that prevent their counterattacks. Dual Bot joins Ascended Fjorm as a Nelsie Disrupt Savior. 
Now, see, this job completely messes with squishy units who rely on fire sweep to stay safe, and Violet has essentially triple scowl if they win that res check, and they're using far safe. That protects them from specials, and Violet has no guard to charge up their own special for a counter. At 46 base res, they also get plus 14 to all stats, minus speed. Foes are going to need 56 res to not get scowled, and that's not including other skills like Fire Flood Boost. For the unique special, the Bonnets bring Supreme Heaven. Damage wise, this is just Male Bonnets Sublime Heaven special, 2 quit on Draconic Aura that gets stronger versus Dragon than Beast. It has built in DR Piercing on activation, and new to the special is a similar effect to Armored Beacon or Flow. If the foe is ranged and unit or foe special is ready or has triggered, reduce damage from the next attack by 30%. I guess Supreme is the new hot keyword for recent Powercraft specials, and this is a fairly good upgrade for Violet, unpierceable damage reduction that generally will proc against specials. However, Holy Yo Blade already prevents specials with triple scouts, so the 30% DR probably won't affect that first hit. It can cover for brave hits that trigger a special or on follow-up attacks, since Violet is a very slow unit this time. Violet does bring some extra defensive power with the new Weaving Fighter. This beast goes is the Tier 4 Wary Fighter, but it's only for physical damage armor units. At start of combat, if above 25% health, inflict minus 4 attack and defense on the foe, plus both the user and foe cannot make a follow-up attack. This skill now reduces damage from first attacks with an S by X%. percent. If the foe can double, X is 80%, otherwise it's 40. Additionally, any follow-up attacks with an S also get reduced by 40%. After combat, you heal 7 HP. Weaving Fighter is quite the upgrade, adding massive percent DR to Wary Fighter. Ideally, the user and foe only hit one time, and you still get 40% DR. However, if the foe can follow up by canceling out that one follow-up denial, then their first attack is reduced by 80%. Keep in mind, all the percent DR effects here affect brave hits. You essentially have deflect damage reduction on first and second hit, should enemies quad. If needed, for hits 3 and 4, you still get 40%. But of course, has Supreme Heaven's 30% unpierceable damage reduction as well. For even more defense, we still have their dual skill. Grants plus 6 defense from his field buffs, a status that reduces AoE specials by 80%, and the Hexblade status to unit and allies within two spaces. For just Violet, they also get a status to neutralize armor effectiveness. This dual skill provides AoE DR and Hexblade support, which is kind of an unusual combo. If you want, this can give Winter Edelgard her two statuses needed to proc Prime 4. In general though, Violet can protect against two of their weaknesses and you get adaptive damage to burst down lopsided defensive stats. Let's now go over the syllabus for the Professor's Winter course. Ideally, dual Winter Bonnets are using Far Save. They have Distant Counter, Nelsi Disrupt, and Triple Scowl assuming a res check win. This is a disgusting combo that should prevent first hit specials almost all the time. If the foe can proc a special, Supreme Heaven has unpierceable DR, and Weaving Fighter adds more damage reduction on all hits. If the foe can double, it's 80% for the first hits even. Violet also has Guard via Firefly Boost. After tanking one hit, Slang plus no Guard will charge Supreme Heaven for a DR piercing Draconic R counterattack. Ironically, with Far Save, you will never get the Empowered version. Now hopefully, that gets the KO because Bonnet will not be doubling themselves, Weaving Fighter at least provides healing after combat. If needed, the dual skill will provide AoE protection, Devotorian's Field Buffs, Hexblade, and negates armor effectiveness. It's a very powerful skill with multiple use cases. Generally, the only thing Bonnet needs to do is win the scout res check. Fire Flip Boost and Attacker as far as save adds an extra 11 on top, and you can run a res boost in Sacred Seal if need be. I think Fire Flood is great to keep with the 5 extra HP, and you could stack another 5 with the Squad A Sacred Seals. Another good option is Hardy Bearing to shut down Desperation. To deal with Debos, you could swap to Unity and maybe even go with Guard 4 instead of Weaving. For pure tanking, Distant Demons 4 is fine, and Hardy Fighter again could be used. The issue with pure tanking skills is that Bonnet's main KO plan is just one-shotting with Supreme Heaven. That might not be enough, especially if you start dropping bonus attack. I do want to mention that I think Bonnet's dual Ninja Sanaki matchup is a bit troubled. I think dual Sanaki is just as dangerous as some of the units here on this banner, and she kind of circumvents Bonnet's kit. Sanaki doesn't need a special, which means no unpierceable DR from Supreme Heaven. Meanwhile, Sanaki's whole deal is brave attacks with high amounts of DR piercing, meaning she kind of just shreds Waving Fighter's main function. She also doesn't quad, so no 80% DR to start with. Unless Freyr's on your team, you also can't really avoid mass debuffing, especially as a save unit. 
I think Dual Winter Bonnet is good, but when Nelsie Disrupt or the Unpierceable DR don't come into play, then they're kind of wasted effects. They absolutely can hard counter pre-charging squishies, but their own damage reduction is also open to being targeted as well. Looking at their kit, it seems a little obvious that the professors try to rein in their house leaders in some special mechanics. It feels like Winter Duel Bonnet is a direct answer to Wind Tribe Claude. Triple Scout plus DR Piercing Counter kind of kills Claude's whole vibe. That being said, he isn't giving up because Winter Claude actually brings his own special charging weapon as our Tempest unit. That one is even inheritable. The professors will confiscate that weapon, but we can talk about what you can do with it against non scowling teachers. For those of you who are summoning, I wish you the best of luck. It is a rough season for the orbs. I have my eyes personally on no quarter, but my 40 orbs say otherwise, so I'm gonna need some time to farm. Thank you for watching. Have fun with these new busted winter ults, and I will see you in the next video.